God save the manuals. In the realms of the 911, the 992's interior really does look like it's from the space age, doesn't it, technologically speaking. But if you choose the no cost option of the manual gear shift, you get slap bang in the middle of your cockpit, a good old bit of technology from the old world. But the manual transmission is a dying breed in automotive circles, isn't it? It's gone the way of, well, teletext and pages, I'm afraid, lost to yesteryear. In terms of the manual transmission anyway, Porsche is choosing to persevere, unlike many of its rivals. And the reason is it has such a rich tradition of manual transmission in the 911. And before I go anywhere testing today's offering out, I'm going to give you the complete historical rundown. In terms of the 911, it all started with this. This is the 901 shifter. These 901 gearboxes were fitted as a manual five speed to all Porsche 911s from inception in 1964, right the way up until the E program of 1972. What's unique about this gearbox, as opposed to the 915, which succeeded it, they're both five speed, is the 901 has a dogleg first gear. Why were they dogleg? Well, this same 901 codename gearbox was also fitted to the 904 and 906 race cars. I'm not gonna be driving this car today. It needs fuel and it actually runs on 105 octane, which we don't have. I'm gonna try and get out of this race car now with at least a modicum of decorum. It's probably not going to happen. The 901 made way for Porsche's 915 transmission in 1972, which switched to a more traditional shift pattern. The 915 saw the 911 through the SC and early 3.2 Carrera era before switching in 1987 to the G50 gearbox, necessitated by the fact the 911 had grown in both torque and weight over the last 10 years or so. The G50 was still a 5 speed, but reverse was moved from right and down to left and up. This gearbox was carried over for the 964 with some slight revisions for the four-wheel drive variant which was also renamed G64 rather than G50. It's a very nice gear change. So by the turn of 1993 when the 993 911 was released, the 911 was blessed with the six-speed manual gearbox and it was actually a six-speed manual that would be in three-pedal 911s right the way up to the end of the 997 Gen 2 era in 2012. So that's very nearly 20 years of the six speed stick shift 911. The 993 actually largely stuck with the setup of the 964, albeit with an extra gear. It obviously helped emissions, it obviously helped MPG, it just made the car a little bit more suitable, I suppose, for long distance touring. The shift itself is absolutely beautiful. I'm driving this car from cold and there is absolutely zero, and I mean zero, recalcitrance. What an absolutely beautiful gearbox. A long way mechanically from the early 911 is the 991, which hailed a whole new era for its manual transmission. Gone are the six speeds replaced by this seven speed uh, made by ZF and codenamed MT11. I'm not the greatest fan in the world of the seven speed. I think there's a reason why all of the GT products from the era were fitted with a totally different six-speed unit. But there are improvements, to be fair, to this seven-speed in the 991 generation. The first of all is the placing of the shifter. It's a lot more elevated now over the 997. In terms of driver engagement, the relationship between the steering wheel and the shifter is a really nice, positive one. There is further good news as well, in the sense that the Gen 1 GTS, i.e. this, uh, the gearbox was revised ever so slightly along with all of the Gen 2 cars that follow for the 991 generation. It's just a little bit less clunky. The earlier cars, I'm afraid, they are just, they're quite notchy. More so on the four-wheel drive cars than the two. Not a bad gearbox by any stretch, but certainly not the greatest. That brings us up nicely, doesn't it, to the present day. So, we better find out what this new 7-speed is all about. really light and really refined over the 991. The main thing to know really is this is largely carried over from the 991 generation 911. What I mean by that is it's the same gearbox supplied by ZF with an identical casing to the PDK transmission, albeit in manual form it's been tweaked over the previous generation. 
Some other things to note, the manual transmission is 45 kilos lighter than that PDK unit. It's twinned to a mechanical limited slip differential and that really does give you a healthy dollop of old school, doesn't it? Manual shifter, mechanical limited slip differential, feeding power to the rear wheels only. It's a purist dream, isn't it? But here's the thing, this whole notion of the Porsche purist is dying out, I'm afraid. Of the 991 Gen 2 generation 911, the split between PDK and manual transmission is 90-10, 9-0-10 in favour of PDK. When it comes to GT3, of which of course for the Gen 2 generation, again you had the choice of a six speed motorsport gearbox, which is light years ahead of the seven speed, 50% of buyers still opted to pair that naturally aspirated four litre engine with that PDK gearbox rather than the manual shifter. Only when it gets down to the Carrera T does the balance tip in favour of the six shift. Around about two thirds of the Carrera T came with the manual transmission. So you can't really blame Porsche for taking two years to bring out the manual transmission in the 992 in Europe. A, there was emissions to get round, but also it's not exactly as if loads of people are going to be queuing up at the door waiting to buy it in the first place. I have been driving this car five minutes and I can tell you already this is a vast improvement over the 991. I am so impressed. In fact, my mind is slightly blown just by how much better it is considering it is the same gearbox. The clutch pedal is light but not superficially so. The actual shifter itself, again, amazing placement in terms of relationship to the steering wheel, that's where the 991 gearbox did really, really well. But I feel like the throw is incrementally shorter. I feel like we're in the realms of Carrera T in terms of distance of that row through the gate. The other amazing thing is no clunkiness. Absolutely no clunkiness whatsoever. I would be interested to try the four wheel drive. This is the Carrera S, a two wheel drive only, as I said. And there is a slight difference in feel between the two. Um, in the 991 generation, the four wheel drive car is just a tiny bit more clunky through the gate. I have to say though, this, nothing. That is a beautiful, beautiful throw. More good news, at least at face value, is the fact that although PDK is the standard option these days on the 911, manual is a no cost option. I say at face value, and that's because in the 991 Gen 2 generation, the PDK transmission was a 2,500 pound option. So this time round, is Porsche giving away gearboxes or is everybody paying two and a half thousand pound for their transmission of choice? You decide. Choose manual though, and you do get Sport Chrono Pack featuring dynamic engine mounts, the Chrono Clock, PSM Sport Mode, which allows for a greater slip angle, then there's Sport Plus Mode and Sports Exhaust, all thrown in and included without extra cost. I mentioned in my 992 Carrera v Carrera S video which is my first to hit 100k views by the way, that the S is a lot more lively. Well, I think the mechanical limited slip diff is even more lively than the electromechanical oof. Which is probably what you want, right? As a driver, manual transmission, engagement. And on that note, we come face to face with the nemesis of manual transmission in the 911 as I pop it in sport and drop down a cog auto blip yes auto blip i'm afraid is a feature of both sport and sport plus and you can't turn it off unless you disable all traction systems however a decent thing to note is in wet mode which is standard specification in all 992s auto blip comes on i think that's a good thing when you downshift in wet mode there's a nice smooth transition there's no upsetting the balance of the car in any way and again as a safety feature I welcome that. I don't so much welcome it though in sport mode. As I say, the kind of buyer that's gonna spec manual transmission is gonna be a Porsche purist. It's probably not gonna be an everyday 911. Let them play. Top speed, by the way, in the manual is the same as that of the PDK in the 992 Carrera S, 191 mile an hour. The difference is in the manual, that top speed is realized in sixth gear. I tell you what, 
from six to thirty. Oh, I feel like you can throw this shifter around. No problems whatsoever in terms of getting lost. Lovely. Six, seven, seven to fifth. Nice. Look at that. Let's turn the traction completely off, which is possibly ludicrous considering how greasy the roads are. Yes. Now we've not got the blip shift. Just like the 991, to be honest, pedal position in the 992 is lovely for heel and toe. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I am really digging that. Tell you what, we might have had to wait two years. It is well worth it. What a marked improvement over the 991 Gen 2. If you really do crave that quintessential, traditional 911 experience of a good old stick shift, feeding power via a mechanical limited slip differential to the rear wheels, allowing you to heel and toe until your heart's content. I certainly feel like the setup in the 992 is in no way prohibitive of that. I tell you what, what a crying shame this transmission isn't available in the Bogo Carrera. If Porsche were to make a 992 Carrera with manual transmission, that thing would sell by the absolute bucket load and I would probably be somewhere near the front of the queue. That is about it for today. I hope you enjoyed not just the appraisal on the 902 Carrera, but the history of the manual gearbox and the Porsche 911 as a whole. Please do like and subscribe if you can. It really does go a hell of a long way for me. And it also means you're not gonna miss out on any Porsche content coming up. I'll see you in the next video. If you're specking one of these, come on over to the 10%.